Hi, this is Yosapin Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's See Your Demo. And today we have with us once again Ram Angar, Chief Evangelist at Cloud Foundry Foundation and Timothy Hijner, member of technical staff at VMware. Ram, Timothy, it's great to have you both on the show. Hi Swapnil, nice to be here. Thank you, yeah, good to be here as well. Yeah, and today we are going to talk about Build Packs, Packet Project and also see a demo. Uh, but uh, I would love to start with some of the basic, which is uh, Ram, we have talked about uh, it a couple of times, but it's always good to remind uh, what are Build Packs and uh, what is cloud native aspect of it? So Build Packs are a bunch of scripts that help build your containers. The cloud native aspect of it has been something that the community has been working on for about five years now. And it's an evolution of Build Packs as a build tool from the days of Heroku and Pivotal about a decade ago. Uh, in, and it's bringing it into this new era of containers and Kubernetes and cloud native right now. Now let's talk about uh, the Paketo project and once again, how it's associated with the cloud native landscape and build packs. The cloud native build pack specification um, kind of lays out what a build, how a build pack should behave. And uh, Paketo build packs, the project, serves as an implementation of that specification. Uh, so a concrete um, suite of scripts that that implement that all follow the specification, so that um, anyone who wants to use, the, who wants to conform to the CNB spec, can trust that it will function exactly as outlined there. Excellent. Uh, thank you. What does it mean for Docker? So there's no fear of conflicting Docker or not wanting Docker or removing Docker from the scene, so to say. We will see this during the demo, but Paketo essentially outputs an OCI compatible container image, which can piggyback onto any existing Docker-based workflow that you have right now. Uh, that being said, there's also like some parts of the entire cloud native build pack specification that makes use of Docker in order to create things like stacks and other things. So there's very much a lot, you know, a good amount of interplay that's happening between Paketo and cloud native build packs and Docker. If you look at uh, the whole cloud native constituents user base, it it's like there are big players and there are also small players, startups. If you look at build packs. Who reaps the benefit of BuildPack the most? Is it like big enterprises or also small teams and startups as well? I'd say there are there are benefits of both. Um, I think perhaps for for larger build for larger businesses um, that are maybe out of the the startup phase, uh, the benefits are um, numerous because there's this aspect of rebasing there's um, it makes operators lives much easier you can you don't have to mess around with docker files at scale and so that that's a really good prospect for uh, a large company but on the on the opposing side um, for smaller companies it's easier to get to lay a foundation with build packs because you don't have to redo any infrastructure that's already been um, that's already been established. So, and but it's not hard to do either of those things. So I think there's there's benefits for both, um, and it's kind of hard to 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 declare a winner as far as who benefits the most between those two spaces. I think. So what I wanted to add to that is, if you look at the list of Paketo adopters, on the one hand, you see these massive software engineering companies like. Bloomberg, like ING, and who have lots of compliance and um, security and approvals and all of these tricky operational requirements that are way up the maturity ladder. And on the other hand, you also have a lot of uh, companies that are coming up with platforms like Fly.io and Railway.app and, and, you know, folks in the middle as well, like DigitalOcean app platform consumes build packs. And so, you see a wide spectrum of people coming and using build packs and extracting some advantage out of it. And that makes for a very vibrant community. So, so it's very heartening to see 
this project impacting companies of you know all shapes and sizes one more thing i want to ask is that if you look at large enterprises of course they have all the resources but small startups they do sometimes you know uh, especially when it comes to all these modern technologies can you talk about what are the benefits of build packs that are there for smaller teams and startups i think for for smaller teams and startups you benefit from a uh, quick iteration so you're able to get up and running very quickly uh paketo uh and bill packs in general they detect what's needed from your source code and and adapt to changes in your source code as well um so that's a very good benefit for someone starting up and trying to move quickly uh i think as well you kind of get security baked in uh at the outset of the development process so you don't have to it, it's not an afterthought as you begin to grow you you get that from the from the outset i think that's a really strong component for for startups as well perfect thank you so much now it's time to uh, see some action uh, and uh, you team we have prepared a demo so let's see the demo right now uh, what we are going to demonstrate is how to use big pack in the most basic form uh, we'll build into some of the more uh, intermediate features during the demo uh, but first what we are going to do is kick off a build with what is known as the pack command so pack basically is a cli uh, that consumes the cloud native build packs um, what you're seeing right now is pack consuming paketo builders uh, which is an implementation of the cloud native build packs and pack is going to make use of the paketo build packs in order to create a container image of a node.js app so what kicks off is a build pack life cycle so in the output you can see a bunch of different phases called detect analyze and then later on export so these are the phases that the build packs actually go through and help us go from a source code to a container image tim do you want to walk us through a few details of the build process itself in the detection phase uh the life cycle runs the detect binary that's included in a suite of build packs and um tries to figure out what it is that your Applicate your application image will need given the source code, uh, and it decides which build packs are going to participate in the build process through that through that uh, detection phase. Uh, this all happens in, in parallel, and then a build plan is generated by the end of the detection phase, which contains all of the build packs. and their requirements and the things that they provide to the build uh which have to there have to has to be a requirement met by a provision for the build pack to participate in each case uh one of the newer features we've added you can see here is a, a description of what a build pack may not have found and why it isn't participating in a build In this case, it's the Node Run Script build pack, which would need to have scripts in a package JSON file to participate. And since it could not find any scripts, it decided not to participate in the build here. Uh, and you can see that the Node Engine, npm install, Node Start, and npm start build packs have been chosen to participate, as well as the CAT, CA certificates build pack. some of the other interesting parts while examining this output is you can see a line that says generating sbom so sboms are software bill of materials and uh, they're a big deal right now <laughs> with the executive order from the current administration and um, with all of the talk about supply chain security ain't nobody going to say no to an automatically generated sbom so uh, build packs are capable of automatically generating uh, these s bombs and making them available um, and then if you scroll down further there's configurations for what the 
run command is like you don't have to necessarily specify an entry point.sh and keep those maintained and things like that. Build packs are fully capable of detecting all of these based on the files that are a part of the source itself and including them as part of the final container image. Now, in the last part of the output, um, we see that you know the image has been built um, and an OCI container uh, with the name uh, that we specified has been actually uh, exported from this process. In the next part of the demo, we're going to see uh, the use of a command known as pack inspect. And this is the pack CLI way of basically showcasing what's inside the actual image. So you can see that the image contains a bunch of build packs that were actually used in order to create it. And you can see what processes are used to start it, uh, to run it, etc. There's also information about the base image, which is uh, what is used uh, as sort of boilerplate in order to construct the uh, app layers above. Now, you can also make use of a Docker inspect on the same image. So remember when I said you can make use of existing like Docker commands and existing Docker workflows in order to effectively generate like um, the same kind of experience for app developers. So this is just a quick demonstration of if you have like a Docker inspect command somewhere in your developer's workflow, it will work fine. If you have a Docker run command in order to start images and stuff like that, that will also work. So just a quick demonstration of how build packs based images have a good interplay with uh, Docker based workflows. And Tim, for the last part of the demo, do you quickly want to show how the SBOM uh, stuff works? Sure. So, um, in order to to consume or to see the SBOM, we're going to do a pack SBOM download. TFIR demo. And specify the output folder in order for it to be visible. Dash O and a path. All right, and here now, if we look at the layers directory in SBOM and launch, we'll see that there's SBOM generated for each layer that is uh, crucial in the building of the application image. So for each build pack, uh, there is a separate layer SBOM uh, or a separate set of layer SBOMs generated. So we can look at, for example, the NPM install SBOM in, and the launch modules is what's generated by the npm install build pack, so your node modules in this case. And we can even take a look at an example here. Um, for this example, I'll just load up maybe the shift of the three options that we have. What I want to point out there is uh, we're not picking favorites among SBOM formats. So all of the different uh, formats are available. And depending on what a security or a compliance team uses chooses to consume, uh, they're free to you know pick whichever format they want and run with it. So at the moment, uh, images built using Paketo build packs output SBOMs in all three formats. Ram, Tim, thank you so much for, of course, talking about build packs, Paketo, and also this uh, great demo here. Uh, before we wrap this up, uh, Ram, if you have any words to uh, leave our audience with. Yeah, so what we're seeing with build packs, you know, harks back to the glory days of Heroku. Not that they're not relevant anymore, but um, the entire experience is inspired heavily by that developer workflow of, you know, come with your source code and leave with like an immutable artifact. Um, so right now, you know, the world is 
um, you know, software is eating the world and containers are eating up the software world essentially. And so the ability to produce OCI based containers is a big win for us. And so the big thing that I want to leave our viewers with is Paketo being an open source project, uh, which borrows from the upstream cloud native build pack, which is also a CNCF owned open source project is always looking for more contributors and adopters and maintainers. So if folks who are looking at this want to enable a great platform for their developers and software engineering teams that they manage, go ahead and do it. But if you're also willing to come back and work with us in different areas, then you know, you're most welcome to do so. And we welcome all kinds of contributors into the community. Uh, Ram, Tim, thank you so much for joining me today. And as usual, I would love to chat with you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.